Hey fellow builders, as a lot of you probably know, I'm one of those crazy people that build live steam locomotives. I built a few over the years. When I was looking for a lathe about 10 years ago, I battled to find something that ticked all the boxes. I needed something that I could machine incredibly precise small components. For example, this little taper valve which needs to seal, seal tight on steam. On the other end of the scale, I needed to machine large wheels. For example, at that time, I was building a sterling single with that wheel 30 centimeters in diameter. And of course, I have the odd shaped component that I need to hold and various materials I need to machine. On this cylinder assembly, there's everything from aluminum bronze to bronze to brass, as well as stainless steel for the, for the piston rods. All of these different materials machine differently and I need a lathe that could handle all these different materials. At the time the Mac Africa lathe seemed to tick some of the boxes but not all of them and to call it a precision gear head lathe is probably a bit of a stretch but with a few modifications this lathe can actually end up being pretty pretty precise and incredibly flexible. One of the biggest problems I had with this lathe and I, I found it typically when I was machining wheels is it tended to, to, to chatter quite, quite a lot. The chatter was traced back to the, the catch on the carriage slide. The catch only engaged about five or six moles in the carriage and after about six months this, this hole weared oval and this unfortunately caused chatter. A simple square block was machined and this, and this catch was extended up into the square block with two adjustment screws on the side. This took away most of the, the chatter and ended up improving the quality of the quite, uh, quite, quite substantially. Another thing you need to do quite often when you do model engineering is you tend to change the gears quite often. This is for different screw pitch threads and also for different feed rates when you're doing precision cuts. Every time you took a gear off for the floating spindle, um, you needed to strip the bearings or the bearings that would, would just fall apart. This was modified and, and a simple circlip was, was installed so you actually can pull the gears out without taking that whole shaft apart. And another thing I changed in my lathe which actually worked quite well is all the jibs were pinned and extra adjustment was added to the jibs. The reason for this is, or well, the reason why I did this was just to hold the, the setting for longer. If, that, uh, if the jib isn't pinned, you, you tend to get the, the jib on the inside moving and you tend to lose your setting. So you'll machine a little bit and then all of a sudden the, the sliders are loose. This, this adds considerably to, to tool chatter when, when machining. To improve the, the precision of the machine, I added vernier scales to both my dial gauges. At the time, a DRO was a little bit too expensive for me. Um, and the, the vernier scales were a much cheaper option. In fact, they cost nothing to do. I changed the machine from a 50 micron accuracy to a 10 micron accu accuracy on radius, which is considerably better than the machine was standard. And this is repeatable as well, so it's not, it's not one of those one-off things. Then just a little small thing that I changed is because of all the faceplate machining um, I do, especially with the wheels, the carriage clashed with the back splash guard. So the back splash guard uh, was, was cut out to allow extra travel for the, for the apron. This is only really used when machining wheels or flat components or when you machine um, with a collet, in, a collet and a drawbar. Um, if you like the video, please let me know. Um, there's a whole lot extra additional things that I did to the lathe and I'll do a couple more videos if, if anyone's interested. If you did like my video, please subscribe. Thanks a all. Happy building.